Hey guys, I'm Andy Kay with uh, Color Country Wildlife Studio and I figured it might be helpful at the beginning of the season right here to take and show you guys how to cape out the head of a deer. That way if you're in the backcountry or something, you're trying to minimize weight or space in your pack or whatever it is, I can show you guys how to do it. It's always good to practice on something smaller um, but if you follow these instructions you should be able to do it even for the first time so to start with I've got a deer here that's already been caped out in the body up to the bottom of the head and I'm using a Havilon um, a lot of guys like to use a different knife that's okay this is what I've kind of trained with and what I like to use. So I'm gonna try to stay out of the way of the camera. Hopefully I can successfully do that. Um, we'll see how it goes. So we're, what you do to start is you come and you find where you've left off on your incision going up his back and stopping at the base of his head here. So right here at the base of his head is where it stops and I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to kind of make a Y shape. So I'm going to this left side first in a Y shape and then I'm going back to the original stopping point and I'm making another shape going towards this antler. So now I've got those two started that way you can know so when I cut this way and stop I can know where to come back to so now I'll just take and I try to cut underneath the hair not through the hair cut across the top of his skull kind of going above that ear there you don't want to go too close to the ear. You take the skin and you cut all the way to the base of the antler, to where the burr is. Now I'm going to come back to the other side and do the same thing. I'm trying to do it without being in your guys' way, so that's going to be a little bit more of a challenge. So I've got my cut to each antler now. You can come in here and kind of help it up the skull just a little bit. You want to make sure your cut actually goes all the way to the bottom of those burrs. The, the, the skin kind of goes up the pedicle a little bit, so you have to kind of cut up to where the base of the burr is. So now that I've got that, on a velvet bucket it's a little different. You have to be careful because sometimes their skin on their, vel their antler connects to the skin on the hide. So when you come in with a screwdriver like I normally would on a hard horned deer, you don't, you don't want to tear it clear up the horn or something. So typically on a hard horn animal, it's not a problem. You just use this screwdriver, but I have to be more delicate because this is a velvet deer. So you'll take your flathead screwdriver and you go right around the base 
of that anger and you start hitting it with the hammer staying being very careful that you stay right at the base of the antler. You can use a knife too, but you have to be careful not to cut a bunch of hair. I'm going to come around the front here, try to get a, another angle on him. With, vel with velvet, sometimes it's just easier if you use a good knife as you can rip that thin layer of skin that makes up the velvet. And I'm not going to be the fastest guy in the world. I don't boast on being fast. I just want to be careful. So, if you've made a way, your way around the front really good, sometimes you can come back to the back and give it a little bit of help. I'm gonna come to the other side now. I think it'll help me start working around on both sides if I get a ways on each side. Got it started. Now I'm gonna come in with the knife, I think. Kind of hard when I'm trying to do this for the camera. I have to kind of choose to keep a good position for you guys, so bear with me here. got my screwdriver through but I want to be careful with that velvet so I'm going to come back here make sure try not to cut the hair on the cake just get that skin layer detached okay we're good there now now we got to move to the other side Gonna work it a little bit with the screwdriver. Typically, like I said, with something hard horn, 
you don't have to be as delicate. You can just run that screwdriver all the way around. It's a lot faster. Almost got it. Just trying to be careful. Part of that velvet is trying to stay with the skin. I've got around both antlers and once you get the ears off it's going to peel off a lot easier so how you do that is you find basically take your hand and you find where the ear butt meets the skull and you'll just start to cut kind of against the skull and follow it with the ear and when you get over here to the side of his head you're going to find the ear canal with your knife, don't come up way up here on the ear. That's how you mess it up. Keep it close to the skull and your knife is going to find the ear canal as long as you stay close to the skull. And I still kind of up close to them antlers so I'm gonna work it down a little bit. There's my ear canal. Just cut through it. Cut through and you kind of keep coming. Okay, so I basically have that ear off now. Gonna move to the other ear now. Do the same thing, keep it close to the skull. And you wanna be careful with this velvet. You gotta be delicate. It can come off fairly easy if you're rough on it. There's my ear canal, cut through it.
Okay, so now I'm getting down above the eye. And you'll feel with your fingers kind of where the top of the eye is from the other side, okay? So where you don't want a big mistake that people make with their knife is as they're cutting down towards the eye, they hit this corner here, the back corner of the eye, and they cut a big hole by accident. Yeah, I can fix that, but I don't like to. So I would prefer not to make that problem for myself. So there's that top edge of his eye keeping it close to the skull. You're gonna keep working it down with your knife. And you can always flip it back over and check your progress to make sure you're not messing up. Looks like I'm doing pretty good. So I've got kind of a bunch of extra tissue here that's kind of tucked down in his eye socket. Now I can cut through that and it exposes his eye. Next up is gonna be the tear duct. And that's where a lot of people mess up too. I don't like just cutting right through the tear duct, creating a big old hole. I like leaving the the skin in that tear duct. It's easier to work with when you mount it. So you're gonna come and you're gonna keep your knife in the front of the eye here. You're gonna keep all the tissue you can staying close to the skull. And when you get to that tear duct, and it doesn't hurt, you can come back, check your progress, see where you're at. I'm right at the top corner of the tear duct now. I'm gonna use my knife as like a scoop. It's gonna go into that tear duct all the way. And I'm gonna try not to cut a hole in it. And it's a little bit slow as you go, but if you're patient, You'll get it out. Okay, I got it out without putting a hole in it. So there's my tear duct without ruining it. Got some goop in there. A lot of guys when they mess up, they cut this whole thing out and it just makes it a little bit harder when we mount it. So try not to do that. Now I gotta do the other side. So bear with me. Going across his eye, just went across the back of his eye. Down in here is the meat kind of on the bottom of his neck. So just keep extra tissue when you do these eyes. Just keep it close to the skull and then go through to where it exposes the eye.
getting to where the tear duct is now. Probably be a little bit quicker on this one. I feel like the angle I'm working at is better. You kind of just scoop it out of there with the point of your knife, one little cut at a time, and it'll peel right out. Don't get lazy and just cut across right here. That's when you make a big hole. Try not to do that. Okay, this is kind of working up the bottom of his neck and his jaw. It's coming down his forehead. Gonna tilt it, work it down on the other side. Always remember, it's smarter to leave, in my opinion, it's smarter to leave meat on the cake. If you're nervous, then put a bunch of holes in it. Because it's just harder for the taxidermist. Yeah, it takes a lot more time for us to come back and sew up all your holes from your knife. And it doesn't make as good of an end result. So I'm going to stop about halfway down the, the nose here now. And I'm gonna flip it back around and I'm gonna go to the to the nose and the mouth. This is how you get started on the front of the face. You peel this front lip up and right there where it meets the roof of his mouth, you're gonna cut with your knife straight across. Then you're gonna follow it around all the way up into his mouth. Gonna do that on both sides. And then, same concept for the bottom lip. Right at the base of the teeth, you're gonna cut across and you're gonna work it around both sides. Across the bottom of the tongue here, across his bottom jaw. Keep plenty of material from this edge to there, you need to leave material. That has to be tucked into your mannequin once the cape is tanned. So I kind of like to go up into the corner of his mouth and find where you left off from the other side. Be really careful across the bottom of the jaw. That skin tends to be pretty thin and your knife can screw up and put a hole in that. And that just takes me time to fix. So there's that. Now they've got, in their nose, they have a septum. And as a taxidermist, I won't necessarily use that on the mount. We have to rebuild a, a, uh, a fake septum, but it's the middle cartilage of that nose. And you'll leave kind of just the end of it. So you can do it either from this side you can work your way down and then cut through the septum down to the top of the kind of the top of his mouth or you can come up from the bottom. The easier way, if you've never done it, is probably to work your way down from this side. So right here, I can tell that I'm to his mouth now. I'm gonna cut through. And I'm gonna pick up where I came from the other side. And I 
keep working down. Right now I'm still finding skull. I haven't reached that cartilage yet. Just keep working the skin down, cut through the mouth over here on this side. Find where you left off. Okay, so I'm, I'm really close now to where I'm gonna start finding the transition on this skull from, from bone to septum. You can feel it right here. Right there's the septum. So, what I'll do is I'll work my skin down just a little bit further. And at this point, I can cut down, staying away from the skin, only cutting cartilage. You can cut down through the septum, which is the cartilage. Kind of working my way around. I've always, I've already kind of come through the other side, made my important cuts, and I'm just going to kind of work my way down until I meet up with those. Cutting the cartilage off of the jaw right there, and I've got it detached. Just got to finish the bottom a little bit, trying to be delicate with these velvet antlers. And that's how you cape your animal in the field. Um, what you can do is, is when you're hunting and your buddy or family member or whoever, yourself, shoot a smaller animal where the cape's really not, it's not worth mounting or anything, you can practice on it. I would highly recommend doing that because if you're a serious enough hunter, it'll come through one day to where it'll help you out in a pinch. You'll be able to... Um, successfully cape something without having to rely on a taxidermist or something like that. So, anyways, um, if you're not brave and you just want to let the taxidermist do it, that's fine too. Um, I just figured this might be a beneficial little video for you guys out there to see how that's done. So, anyways, take care. Have a good season. We'll catch you later.